Never be ashamed of a scar. It simply means you were stronger than whatever tried to hurt you. Anonymous. Empowerment in education. Two powerful elements that will help you break free of convention and transform your passion for wellness to a level beyond the status quo. The Essential Oil Revolution, where you're given the tools to supersede an ordinary everyday lifestyle. Inspiring speakers, DIY recipes, healthy living tips, and more. You'll discover it all here. So tune in and get ready for a wellness revolution. For show notes and more, go to revolutionoils.com slash podcast. Hey, everyone. This is Samantha Lee Wright, and you're listening to the Essential Oil Revolution. Thanks for being here. So today's episode was inspired from an email that I received from one of our listeners. The email is from Melissa, and she writes, First, I love, love, love your podcast. I can't get enough of it. I'm so much more knowledgeable in the subject and have benefited time after time because of your podcast. Second, I am part of a Facebook group for Essential Oils, and we have a new member who is a retired vet that suffers from anxiety, insomnia, PTSD, and depression. I immediately thought this could be a good subject for a podcast. I feel like a lot of people can relate and share the information. I hope this finds you well. Keep doing what you're doing. You are awesome. Well, Melissa, first of all, you are awesome. Thank you so much for listening. And thanks for those kind words. I really, really appreciate them. It really keeps me motivated and connected to all of you out there that are listening. And we are all learning together. And I'm so glad that you brought this topic to my attention because really my attention was not in this arena at all. And when this question came in, I was a little bit clueless of where to start, but one of my teammates, in the Revolution Oils team, Kate Dobler recommended that I connect with Nicole Graber, who is really, really immersed in this topic. She is a retired vet herself and suffers from many of the problems that were mentioned in the original email. After spending nearly a decade with service-related debilitating autoimmune and neurological disorders, she managed to regain her health through embracing a more natural lifestyle that included removing toxins from her home and fully embracing nutrition and supplementation. And you're going to get to hear all about her journey with that during the interview. Forewarning um, for those that are listening who maybe suffer from these sorts of issues from PTSD or are just very sensitive listeners or perhaps have children listening, this might be an episode that you will want to skip. We do acknowledge the existence of suicide in this episode, as well as some other hard to swallow content regarding veterans, the way they are treated returning home, and about experiences of war in general. So with that caveat, I hope that you all enjoy the show and really learn something from this episode. I know I learned a ton that I really was very ignorant about, so I'm very grateful for the opportunity to learn and grow in this area. Nicole and I started chatting and just kept going and kept going without much of a pause. So I'm just going to go ahead and plunk you into the beginning of our conversation here, talking about her experiences returning home after service and dealing with this very damaging neurological autoimmune disorder that no one seemed to be able to diagnose or acknowledge what really was going on. Nothing. And there's all sorts of judgment that comes with it with, you know, you're missing a limb, people understand, but if you have an invisible illness, then you get, especially if you're in a wheelchair, but people know that you can stand up or people know that you can walk or they know that your legs work, then it's, oh, well, you must be faking it and milking the system. And, And there's all sorts of, all sorts of difficulties with that. So you end up becoming very withdrawn. I wonder how too that affects your health. If the world is throwing all this bias and this judgment at you, do you ever sometimes find yourself thinking like, God, I wish I did just look sick or. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And that type of thinking leads down a very self-destructive path. I'm sure. 
And um, I mean, my my major wake up call, I was driving back from my boyfriend's house at the time. We're married now, but at the time we were dating and he transferred to about two and a half hours away from where I was going to school. So I'd go visit him on the weekends and I was driving back with my dog in the back seat. She was a Ridgeback and um, at the time was my service dog. She's passed away now about a year and a half ago. And we were going over a bridge and I started wondering what it would feel like to hear the crash of the glass and feel that ice cold ocean water crush into me. And the only reason why I didn't drive off that bridge was because my dog, I had adopted her to keep her from going back to the pound for a second time. She was deemed untrainable. Within a month, she was completely trained and service dog qualified (laughs) of me taking her in. But I kept thinking of how unfair it would be to put her through that because she didn't deserve it. And that was the only reason why I didn't. And that was a huge eye opener that, you know, something has to change because medical's not helping and I need to find something that's worth living for until I die. Cause, you know, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about it later, that ridiculousness wow. that my doctors had put me through. Yeah. Well, we can talk about it now <laughs> if you want. What, what did your doctors put you through? I want to know. We're just jumping in. Let's just forget the, <laughs> forget the preamble. We're in it now. Are you recording? <laughs> I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, are you, are you, are you comfortable with us using that? Uh, yeah, that no, conversation? That, that's fine. I just, I'm, all my talking points are going to be completely or- organized now and <laughs> I like I'm going to be stuttering. <laughs> keep, it, keep it organic. <laughs> um, well, back, back dating, I, I started getting sick when I was stationed in Bahrain, enlisted in the Navy and I started fainting and nobody could understand why. It was only when I was working out. I would go for a run and I would fall unconscious. So they medevaced me to the Naval Hospital in Bethesda, Maryland, which is now combined with Walter Reed. And And this was what year? This was in 2005. Okay. And um, the first doctor there that I saw was a pulmonary specialist who was trying to work me up to prove that I had asthma. And it came back that I did not have asthma, but their tests were inconclusive because every time they would put me on the treadmill, I would end up collapsing and actually would land in the center of the treadmill and be shot off into the bookcases behind us, which Mm. (laughs) looked like something out of a cartoon. It was hysterical. What the corpsmen were telling me was absolutely hysterical. It's how, how is that physically possible? (laughs) (laughs) And I spent six months living in the medical hold barracks there where, you know, and when you're going through issues like that, you don't sleep much. And Mm -hmm. everybody around me that lived in the medical hold barracks, none none of them slept well either. Most of them were combat injured Marines. Some of them were special forces, Navy SEALs. Some of uh, there was a couple of us that were women. Everybody had something going on with them. There was actually one other girl there that had the exact same issues that I did. Oh, no way. Yep. And what was their theory at the time of of what was happening to you both? Just asthma? No, for her, it was, she battled a lot with them telling her it was in her head. And then she got sent over to the National Institute of Health where they diagnosed her with um, postural orthostatic hypertension, tachycardia syndrome. And um, also low blood pressure and um, give her another diagnosis of dysautonomia. And for me, I had, apparently I had anxiety where I would just hyperventilate until I passed out, according to my neurologist, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which wasn't true because the hyperventilating and the anxiety didn't happen until I snapped back into consciousness. Ah. So I went through about three years worth of struggles with multiple doctors before getting the same dysautonomia and um, diagnosis and low blood pressure diagnosis. Dysautonomia is basically a fancy term for there's something misfiring with your autonomic nervous system in your brainstem, but we don't know what. 
and we don't know why and we don't know how. So I went, I was in and out with cardiologists, neurologists, and psychologists, and people telling me it was seizures. No, it's psychosomatic. No, it's definitely all in your head. And it got to the point where I was on an involuntary medical hold after my enlistment was up. And this was after the, the my third period of limited duty had ended, and my JAG officer who was the only person who managed to keep me in to get medical care, happened to be on vacation at the time when our personnel office called me on my birthday and said, well, you're not fit to stay in, but you're not fit to get out, and your doctor just deployed, so there's nobody to start a medical board for you. So good luck. Take it up with the VA. Can you be out by Friday? It was Wednesday. Usually you get two weeks to check out of a command. I was given three days to check out of the Navy, and I managed to negotiate another week for myself before being completely out with nothing, no support, no income, no ability to work, absolutely nothing. So I called my dad. Thankfully, I was kind of expecting it, so I had a a bit of padding in my savings account and um, had my dad fly out to help me make it back to Arizona from Maryland where I was stationed at the time. And um, it was a a long four-day car ride with me attempting to drive, but really not being able to do much for five minutes at a time. (laughs) At that point, it took the VA eight months to see me, which is incredibly short compared to the wait time that veterans are going through now, just to do preliminary examinations for receiving disability through the the VA. And the VA has a stipulation where with their ratings that if you have any type of a seizure disorder, you automatically warrant 100%, which would give you, for somebody single without kids, would give you just under $3,000 a month to live on. They decided that my seizures were actually fainting. And even though I was having multiple times a day, they were so erratic that it could be anywhere from three or four times in a day, or maybe I could go two or three days without having anything, any issues. So they rated me at 50%, which gave me $974 a month to live on. And not able to get a job. Without the ability to work. And I tried. I spent a year and a half constantly going to job interviews. And every single person I would have to disclose that, and they tell you in the transitioning class not to disclose any disabilities. Well, mine isn't really something you can hide. You can hide a prosthetic. You cannot hide a seizure disorder. You cannot hide suddenly going unconscious. You cannot hide massive confusion. You cannot hide your blood pressure dropping to 80 over 40 and you collapsing on the floor. And so all of these symptoms, you none of this was happening before you joined the Navy, correct? And and so was there ever an answer to why this manifested? It's all theories. I have a couple of doctors telling me it, it was chemical exposure while I was in Bahrain. What kind of chemicals? No, they don't know. They said there's no uh-huh. way to find out, but it it sounds a lot like chemical exposure. I've had mm-hmm. one neurologist suggest that there was a study out of Rhode Island from a naval neurologist up there who found that aluminum in the air throughout the Middle East is so fine that you can put over 2 million particles of aluminum on the head of a pin. Wow. And everyone's just breathing that over there. And I guess it's just for some people, it doesn't affect them. And then one theory is for some people, it affects them greatly like you. No, it, it affects more people than you think. I, I yeah. dove into it and it's it's theorized that it could be a major cause of Gulf War syndrome, which affects... Mm-hmm. The time that I read it was in 2009... And they estimated there's over 150,000 veterans going through a list of symptoms that perfectly described me. I had every single one of them. And they're finally starting to recognize that in the VA now, but only if you are in that area in the early 90s. So because I was there 10 years too late, I didn't qualify. So I didn't qualify Mm. for the care, the treatment, or the diagnoses 
even though I had all the same issues. Yeah. And I've actually met and coached several people who've gone through the same thing, helping them handle how to navigate the VA system and everything else, which is really concerning that people from all over the country have almost the identical story that I do. And there's, I mean, I don't hear about this anywhere. You don't. You hear about these devastating suicides that happen, like the one that Mm -hmm. happened earlier this month right outside of Walter Reed, where a veteran killed himself. And honestly, I've had nine friends this year kill themselves because of the care that they're promised from the VA, but then they go to the VA to get the care and they're turned away. It's, It's absolutely atrocious the care that, that most people are receiving. And um, I mean, I've, I've gone through 32 doctors, 32 specialists, and one of them was able to provide me help. And that was a psychiatrist who was the only doctor to truly believe and to fully and correctly document what I was going through. And um the only one who didn't try to push medicine down my throat, but instead was talking to me about how to, how to find a little bit of joy and happiness in life to counteract everything else going on. He actually encouraged Mm -hmm. me to get back into playing music and to search for alternative options just because it would do, it would do something to keep my mind active because I was having such bad confusion issues. And a lot of that was related to um, traumatic brain injury that the VA refuses to diagnose me with, because even though I have fallen down concrete stairs, I've hit my head on every type of service you can imagine, including computers, desks, chairs, boxes, dog crates, workout equipment. Yeah. At one point, I had fallen down two two flights of concrete stairs headfirst. But because I was, according to the social worker that I talked to, I do not qualify for the TBI, traumatic brain injury, diagnosis because I was not on deployment getting blown up. Mm-hmm. Now, was it this doctor you were referring to earlier that helped you explore other options and sort of listen and get you back on your feet. Was he the one that introduced essential oils to you? No, actually that came about a a very different way. (laughs) When I was five years old, my parents separated and my birth mom used essential oils after she and my dad separated. And, you know, sometimes would put some lavender on me if I had a, you know, some little headache, little head tension. Sometimes she'd put a, a drop or two of peppermint oil on the collar of my shirt if I had some belly issues or a little bit of nausea. And I didn't think anything of it. And um, that psychiatrist, actually, I saw him while I was still on active duty trying to figure out everything because they were trying to tell me I was psychosomatic, that it was all in my mind. So I went to him to get that cleared. And um After leaving the Navy, I found one neurologist who diagnosed me with partial complex seizures, and life got a little bit better with that, though I had bad reactions to every medication they tried, and actually moved from, at that point, I was living in California, I moved out to Virginia because I heard that there was a really, really good neurologist at at one of the VAs in Virginia, and... um, some of the medication that he gave me actually put me in the hospital with pancreatitis and liver failure. And at my follow-up appointment, I said, I told him, I said, look, we've gone through every single seizure medication that the VA has to offer. And every single one of them has given me hospitalizing side effects. Is there any way that we can do something else? And he laughed me out of the office. And literally, literally laughed me out of wow. the office. And this was after he berated me a couple nights prior for being in the emergency room, actually in the middle of the emergency room. And he is yelling at me because nobody's ever going to be able to help me. I am never going to get better. I'm going to get worse until I die. And there is no point on seeking help because nobody can help. And after our follow-up appointment where he left me out of the office, I was supposed to see him two weeks later again. And I called because I didn't receive the um, the note card in the mail to tell me what time the appointment was. So I called to verify that I had it right on my calendar. 
and his secretary told me I no longer exist. He managed to remove me from care at that facility completely as a patient. That means I would have to wait anywhere from six months to a year to be seen again. Incredible. I just have no words. And this is after this is after they referred me to another psychiatrist who told me that I care too much about my health, but it's okay because they have a pill that will fix that. He's going to put me on medication so that I won't care about anything anymore. How common do you think your experience of this is, you know, to the other veterans? <laughs> Honestly, every single person I've talked to has a disturbingly similar story. That is tragic. The biggest difference between me and a lot of the people that I've met is while sitting at the rheumatology office, I sat there in tears looking at somebody else with a autoimmune disease who no longer had the use of his legs and was hooked up to a machine that bicycled his legs for him to try to keep him somewhat physically active while they were fitting me for my crutches. And um, he looks at me and smiles while I'm doing a walking test and stumbling my way across the room, barely able to stand. And with the most endearing look in his eyes, he says, you look just like I did not 10 years ago. And I was devastated because the guy that was sitting next to me at the same table in that same therapy room lost his leg in Iraq and was talking about how he can't wait to get his new prosthetic because he wants to run marathons because he sees other guys who are amputees running marathons. He sees the other side of his recovery. And I'm looking mm -hmm. at this man thinking, oh, dear God. <laughs> That's your other side. That's what you're thinking. This is my other side. My other side is a hedgestone and a life of complete dependence and misery. Um, I actually looked at the rheumatologist and I told him that can't be my other side. I, I need to be somebody who who can show you that your other side doesn't have to be hooked up to a machine that pedals your legs for you because you can no longer use them. There has to be another side for people like me. There has to be some sort of recovery. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear the moms <laughs> in the background. It's my two-year-old. <laughs> there has to be something to look forward to. And by God, if you can't show me something, then I'm going to have to show it to you. This is all while thinking very disturbing suicidal thoughts. This is all while cursing, cursing God, cursing my life, cursing everything that you could possibly curse. Because why am I not even physically strong enough to kill myself? Dear God, I can't even kill myself. I am not physically strong enough. I can't even commit suicide as a way out. Because I'll go unconscious before I can do anything. Wow. It's just, it's, and, and the one time where I was actually physically capable of pulling my car off the bridge into the ice cold ocean water, my dog happened to be behind me and kept me going because it's not fair to her. And a friend of mine sent me a blog post about the paleo diet, about using food as medicine. And I remember talking to my doctor, uh, that same neurologist that removed me from the VA, I remember asking him about a holistic lifestyle. When he left me out of the office, he told me that that stuff would kill me. What? A holistic lifestyle would kill yes, you? Yes. A natural health lifestyle will kill me. Relying on food as medicine will kill me. Mm. Any alternative therapies will kill me. Well, if all of that's going to kill me and I'm just waiting to die anyways, then let's prove it. <laughs> Let's prove it that this stuff is going to kill me because I have nothing left to do. I have nothing else to live for. I have nothing to look forward to. Oh, yay. So my 30th birthday is coming up between, you know, in a few years and I probably won't live to see it. I, I can't even look forward to my birthdays every year. I have nothing to look forward to. I have nothing going on. So why not see if this will hurry up and off me sooner? And <laughs> Then something amazing happened. I went from having on average six seizures a day and just standing up long enough to do dishes from the night before was enough to put me back on the couch completely in pain and exhausted for the next day and a half. 
we went strict paleo. And by the end of the month, I was down to two seizures a week and able to walk almost half a mile without prosthetics, without a walker, without crutches, without a cane, without a wheelchair, just my dog and me walking down the road. Two weeks. Two weeks. That's amazing. How long did it take to get to that point? I'm sorry if you said that already. About a year, almost a year to where uh, about a, a year of building myself up to it and research. And we finally just jumped on it. And a month later, we ended up pregnant after I was told for eight years that it would kill me. That there's no way that if, if by the grace of God, I ended up getting pregnant, the pregnancy would kill me. But now I have a healthy two-year-old. Wow. Yeah, we heard him. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, this September, September 19th, 2013, was the day of my last seizure. I had a grand mal seizure wow. on my dog. I actually fell on our puppy Rottweiler who gently laid me to the floor and my Ridgeback came over and lay down licking my face and the Rottweiler laid down on my arm that was flailing around all over the place. My head was twitching back and forth between their bodies. My boyfriend, at the, now my husband, said it was the weirdest thing he's ever seen. He's never seen me twitch like that with a seizure and that was my last seizure. So we're coming up on the three-year mark where I have wow. not had a single symptom. My migraines are gone. My seizures are gone. My weakness is gone. What an incredible transformation. That is so amazing. It's amazing. And I, I took the dive about, um, about a month and a half after we went paleo. I started thinking, you know, we, we just removed chemicals out of our food and my body's fixing itself. What if we look into additional alternative therapies? What if there's more to essential oils than smelling pretty? What if there's more to what's in your shampoo? So we went on a massive overhaul. We got rid of every single product in our house that had any type of potential toxin in it. We got rid of everything that had an ingredient in it that didn't have adequate safety data. We started growing our own food. In fact, most of the food that we ate while we started the paleo came out of our own garden because I realized how therapeutic playing in the dirt became. And was this fair? It was this like completely counterculture to where you grew up and how you oh, were raised yeah. and, my, and your friends? My dad's a physician assistant in the emergency room. My mom is a nurse who worked as a flight nurse for a while and then in the emergency room. All of my aunts are nurses. My uncle is a fire paramedic. It is very, very Western medicine family with the idea that it really doesn't matter what we eat and what we drink. I mean, they they cannot live without Pepsi and <laughs> they love their Velveeta shells and cheese. Mm -hmm. And um, so the whole idea of using food as medicine is completely foreign. It's all quack science. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> detoxing your home yeah. and, and getting rid of chemicals. Oh yeah. It's all fluff. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's no refuting. I see family members sending me things all the time about how GMOs are safe and how it's really not an issue with the chemicals. It's genetic. and But there's nobody in my family history that has the same issues that I do. So, you know, it's the, the non-toxic living, the, the changing your eating habits and everything that comes associated with that took me from being on my deathbed to living a whole new life that I never thought was anywhere near being in the cards for me. And so how do you use essential oils now in your day-to-day -day living and to maintain that healthy lifestyle for you? Um, they, they've replaced a lot in our home. We use them infused in products with our hair care, with our shampoo and conditioner, with all of our skin care. I use a natural toner using witch hazel, frankincense, and lavender oil. Sometimes I use them with cooking, especially this past year. We actually moved three times in 15 months to two different states. Mm. And uh, all of our stuff 
was... You didn't have any symptoms during that stressful time? Nothing. I actually was able nice. to drive from Virginia to Rhode Island and back. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, absolutely nothing. We've had no issues now for almost three years. And um, it ended up being awesome that I had my oils case with me because all of our herbs and spices were all in boxes. And um, so during the actual move process itself, I was still able to do a little bit of cooking and um, using the, the Vitality oils is just absolutely incredible to be able to have those. What are some examples of the way you use the Vitality oils in the kitchen? Um, see, we used dill to help make pickles instead of, what was it, like a tablespoon or something of dill? I think we just added a drop or two into the nice. vinegar. A couple of the citrus oils. We love adding citrus fresh vitality blend to blueberry pancakes. (laughs) Nice. That sounds awesome. (laughs) Seriously yummy. I used to use lemon, but I really, really like the the bit of freshness that comes to citrus fresh with the spearmint that's in it. Mm -hmm. Basil and spaghetti sauce, the basil vitality, oregano vitality, we put in with um, our tacos when we did a taco night. It's great. Yeah. But I want to talk about uh, emotions because I feel like, especially for veterans, that's something that I imagine every veteran struggles with coming back from duty and, and this culture yeah. shock. And if you're yeah. a veteran and you're anywhere where there is, you're going anywhere where there could possibly be malaria, you're actually required to take a um, malaria pill. And they've actually, earlier this month, I was reading an article in the Navy Times where, what is it called? Mefloquin. Uh, my husband actually was required to take it. it has um, one of the side effects to that is causing damage to the brain that mimics PTSD behaviors. Oh wow! So permanent damage, or mm-hmm. or okay. Mm-hmm. So far, it actually it's actually pretty pretty crazy. So a lot of people have the the crazy heightened emotions that comes from experiences from the military, but some of the medication that we receive can actually magnify the effects of it. So what do you do? I mean, what do you do with that, that knowledge? You share it if you can. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's part of why I'm here is because I truly believe that knowledge not shared is knowledge wasted. But a lot of veterans come home and everybody, everybody has a different transition story. Some trans, transition very smoothly and don't have any issues. Others, especially those with um, disabilities, we go through quite a few stages. There's a lot of grief. There's a lot of feeling cheated, like especially in my situation where I was shoved out of the military with absolutely nothing. I felt very betrayed, mm-hmm. um, very isolated, especially with... Um, a lot of the judgment that goes on with people who just don't understand. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of nervous tension, sometimes debilitating. A lot of, yeah. a lot of veterans have difficulty reacclimating, which causes them to isolate themselves. Many veterans experience some horrifying, destructive thoughts and dreams, especially the nightmares, edginess, yeah. anger. Sometimes they have outbursts. Other times they bottle all of that up until they explode. You know, we just, last May, we had a um, a friend that I knew in the hospital, one of the few that actually had picked me up off the floor and helped me, had um, killed himself. And nobody understood why, because he seemed like he was fine. He was talking about doing better when... A lot of us say that, yeah, we're doing great because mm-hmm. nobody wants to know about the struggles that we're going through. And sometimes we want to forget that we're going through struggles and convince ourselves that we're okay. Because when nothing else works, maybe you can convince yourself that it is working. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know, all of that, the grief when you lose people, you know, I've, I've lost friends to combat and I've lost friends to the invisible war wounds after combat, the flashbacks, the memories. And then everything compounded by how we're treated at the VA, at the veterans hospitals. My story that I was talking about earlier, that's that's not an isolated story, not mm-hmm. by any means. That is much more common than than anybody outside of that system would believe. 
being turned away from the one source who is solely designed to help you is incredibly depressing and is exactly why veterans have such a high suicide rate. Veterans actually have a 30% higher chance of committing suicide than people who did not serve in the military. I believe it. After hearing your story, I mean, I'm actually surprised it's not higher. Wow, tragic. On top of that, the unemployment rate is... I mean, you're you're talking... The last figures I saw just for veterans was a 23% veteran unemployment rate. So I imagine coming back from from service, there's so much sadness, grief, anger, there is. loss, confusion. It's very hard to acclimate, as you said, and you've got all of these emotions that are so out of balance. What have you learned about essential oils that can be helpful for veterans that are in this similar situation? Uh, essential oils and emotions, in all honesty, they go together like chocolate and ice cream. <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. Well said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I almost made a um, Forrest Gump comment on that with peas and carrots, but yeah, chocolate <laughs> and ice cream is so much better. They both very intimately deal with the limbic system. And I know you've, you've talked about the limbic system before on your podcast. I'm not going to go too far into it, but basically your limbic system controls a lot of your emotions and essential oils affects your limbic system. And there's, there's nothing quite like having that extreme nervous tension flare. You can feel it climbing and you try to suppress it, which only makes it climb higher and faster until it just completely engulfs you. But you take a quick, quick little smell of that stress away, that stress away oil blend and that vanilla lime copaiba goodness just completely melts everything and you just, you just sit there in awe that you're sitting there, you're embracing, you're ready for it. You're ready to just get completely hammered by the shakes, <laughs> by that overwhelming, I can't even sit still because, oh, good Lord, it's happening again. And just to sit there in peace for just a moment is, it's a whole experience that you really have to feel for yourself to be able to fully understand it. And um, actually, the, the girl that I coach has been going through um, quite a few suicidal tendencies. And she explained almost the exact same thing that I felt the first time I tried using stress away during that tension, that tension fit. And um, said she was very close to holding a knife to her wrist. And she put a couple of drops of that stress away blend in a bath and just melted, completely melted. And it's... You know, it's it's really something that you have to experience. If you haven't experienced it, you need to find somebody who has some that you can steal. <laughs> because, <laughs> oh, good Lord, do I wish that I had that one little bottle while I sat in the waiting room at the Veterans Hospital. <laughs> yeah. <'Cause laughs> I would have just sit there and unapologetically sniffed out of this bottle until people thought I was crazy. It sounds like the doctor needed a big <laughs> dosing of humility on him too. Doctor, isn't that a isn't that a blend that Young Living makes? He humility? needed a dose of the common yeah. sense blend. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. Is there a blend for that? <laughs> and I, I would really love to encourage everyone to go back and listen to I think it was podcast episode 22 where you talked really in depth about the book releasing emotional patterns with essential oils. Yeah, I think that is our our most referenced interview yes. that I did with the, Dr. Carolyn Mine, mm-hmm. who wrote the book on emotions and essential oils. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that back. I've actually been giving that book to my, um, my veteran friends that are using oils and getting coaching from me. And it has been truly quite literally a lifesaver for us. So for veterans listening that, you know, they, they don't have the book, maybe they're going to buy it. Maybe they won't, you know, what are maybe just like the top takeaways you'd want them to walk away from this interview with just some practical skills that they can do right now with essential oils to help themselves? I mean, you've already mentioned some, but um, any other takeaways you want to add? Well, there's there's a couple of oils that I would really, really recommend. Most of them being out of the premium starter kit that Young Living sells. The way you use them really doesn't matter as much as actually using them. 
Yeah. If, even if I it's agree. just sniffing it right out of the bottle or putting it on your hands and putting your hands up to your face or putting it in a diffuser or putting a couple of drops on your shirt or on a leather bracelet or a stone necklace, just using them is huge. But um, with the actual specific oils, frankincense is awesome at helping to mellow you out and um, really ditch those feelings of being completely worthless. And lavender is really helpful to relax and to handle criticism when you're feeling abandoned. And when you feel like all of those emotions are cooped up and ready to explode, lavender really helps to calm them down. Lemon is one of those that I really can't be without. It helps overcoming the feeling of being left behind, which is huge with veterans, especially when you see your friends still in the military advancing in the ranks that you should be advancing with them. Feeling detached, like you don't belong because now you don't belong in the civilian world, but you no longer belong in the military world and you're just stuck in that limbo. Lemon really helps pull away from feeling stuck and empty and the frustrations that come with it. Peppermint helps not only with sharpening your mind, but also kicking that feeling of being a complete failure and being dependent on everybody and rigid, restricted. Purification is wonderful for dispelling the anger and the feeling alone and rejected. And um, RC, even the RC blend, even helps when you're feeling completely depleted. So, And then with the, the oils outside of the kit, Valor, I know it's out of stock right now, and usually during the summertime, but that is... should be back soon. It I should. Think. I think September yeah. or October, it should be back. But it is absolutely essential in a veteran's oily toolkit. It helps with diffusing aggression, getting rid of that feeling overly defensive, being afraid of conflict. Um, sometimes you need a little bit of conflict, especially dealing with the VA. And Valor really helps build you up for that. It helps calm you down when you feel like you're unable to cope with anything. It helps bring you back down when you're feeling persecuted and withdrawn. And it it really, really helps calm down that overwhelming nervousness. That is one oil that I do not go anywhere without, whether it's walking to the kitchen or going for a car ride, going to the grocery store. I always have Valor somewhere with easy access. I, I just imagined you with like a Batman tool belt on with like <laughs> oil stuffed everywhere. You get a picture of that. That would be fantastic. That's pretty much how I feel. <laughs> yeah. No, Valor, I actually tell people, my business builders especially, that, you know, just Valor up and do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love so it. So Valor is now a verb for me. Sandalwood is also really good for when you're feeling codependent and dreadful and fearful. But yeah, just just using them is is the biggest thing. Um, Joy is another big one that I always have on extras on hand. With um, helps a lot with the nervous tension and getting over disappointment and those those days where you're feeling especially full of grief. And even sometimes when you're judgmental or just feeling in a miserable mood, rolling on some joy, it's eerie. It, it only takes seconds for it to kind of make you giggle a little bit. And then you laugh at yourself because you're giggling for no reason. <laughs> or a reason you don't want to believe is true. <laughs> yeah. Like my husband says, are you sure your oil can really do that? Sure. <laughs> Let's try it. <laughs> Let's try. And you tell me. Doesn't take them long. No, it doesn't. For sure. <laughs> Well, Nicole, you've given just some amazing advice for those that are listening in. I have a few more questions for you, but let's just take a quick break really quick to thank our sponsors. Support for today's show comes from Thrive Market. I know a lot of our listeners already have taken advantage of our exclusive 30-day trial and 20% off your first order. So I know a lot of you are loving it already. For those that are not already familiar with Thrive Market, it's like the Costco meets Whole Foods of internet shopping. You get the best organic and non-GMO brands for up to 50% off retail price shipped nationally to your door for free within two to three days. It's amazing. And they also have categories that you can shop for, including 
a paleo category. So you can go onto the site, click on paleo, and it automatically filters everything that you see. They even have an amazing paleo getting started kit. It's a 14 piece Thrive Market Ultimate Paleo Kit that gets you stocked with some really amazing baseline products like marinara tomato sauce, bone broth, grain free granola, avocado oil, mayo, almond butter, tropical trail mix, mustard vinaigrette with avocado oil, coconut oil, albacore tuna, pink salmon, and so much more. This is an amazing way to get started if you are interested in looking into the paleo diet or just looking to eat a little bit healthier. You can check out Thrive Market and get an exclusive 30-day trial and 20% off your first order if you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash revolution oils. Don't forget that forward slash revolution oils to get that 20% off your first order. That's 20% off in addition to the almost 50% off retail price that you're already saving just by shopping on Thrive Market. Hope you guys enjoy it. Check it out, thrivemarket.com forward slash revolution oils. All right, Nicole, before you go, I always love to ask our guests just these two simple questions. The first one is just, can you share with us your daily health habits and what those look like? Well, every morning when I wake up, I do a very light meditation, mostly envisioning the mood for that day. Um, After I get out of bed, I use Young Living's Mint Facial Scrub, every morning because it really does a great job at helping me wake up and feel refreshed. Just the the spearmint and the peppermint in it are just awesome at helping to wake you up and get you moving and getting that, that cloud out of your face. Also in the mornings, I make sure to drink at least one ounce of our Ninja Red supplement. And um, sometimes I make a smoothie with it. Other times I just take it out of a shot glass. <laughs> Um, Aside from that, I've completely removed all products in our home that contain toxins or anything without sufficient safety studies. And um, every night going to bed, we add a few oils to our diffuser in our bedroom, which is usually a mix of black spruce, lavender, and tangerine. Those help really, really well with facilitating relaxation and sleep. And then right before falling asleep, I do some deeper meditation and notice the things that have occurred recently that I'm thankful for and things that are upcoming that I'm looking forward to. And um, being a stay-at-home mom with a toddler who refuses a routine, um, that's pretty much about the extent of everything that I do every day. That's actually pretty Um, impressive. I I do use oils every day. I usually have a diffuser necklace on with a couple of drops of oils, depending on what type of an oily mood I'm in. And um, I do keep a diffuser going, but that also largely depends on on the day and what smells good today. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Now you might've kind of already answered this, but if you can think of one thing that we should all ditch completely and replace with something healthier, what would that be? I would have to say processed food. Okay. Now we've talked a lot about veterans and dealing with emotions, acclimating back, struggling with those, all of the emotions that are going on. Do you want to share any resources for those listening to help people in that similar situation? Right now, there's very little when it comes to essential oils, but right now I'm actually working on an ebook that helps outline toxin awareness and, um, how that can improve your health, getting rid of toxic ingredients. You know, the average household has over 60,000 toxic chemicals just based on the products that they use in their home. So helping to ditch those. And uh, one of my leaders and I are also working, she's also a disabled veteran. We're working together on developing a list of resources specifically for veterans that, um, can help show the research studies on um, the National Institute of Health's database and um, including some of that in our in an upcoming webinar that we're doing. And for information on that and to be part of our newsletter, you can go to my website, warmlyrustic.com slash veterans, E-O, V-E-T-E-R-A-N-S-E-O. 
and we'll have a newsletter set up for you there. If you're really struggling and you need help and it's just, you know, oils can wait. If you need help with what you're going through, contact battleindistress.org or contact helpsoldiers.org. Those are two absolutely fantastic nonprofit organizations that you can go to that will actually call you back and will help bridge the gap of the um, lack of care that, that you're receiving at the veterans hospitals. Thank you. I'll put a link for all of those resources on the show notes for this episode. And I can't wait for your ebook to come out and um, I'll be attending your webinar when you launch that as well. So thank you for the work that you're doing. And just thank you so much, Nicole, for sharing this journey with us. I know this is a very personal journey, very traumatic for you. Um, I hope that you you sleep well tonight and we haven't brought you back to such a hard time. <laughs> um, but I, I just thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing that because I really think you've probably helped more people than, than you realize or that I realize even that might be listening. I really hope so. And you've really, you've opened my eyes uh, for sure about a lot of issues that were just not anywhere near my radar. I feel really moved by your story. Is there anything that I can do or those listening can do just to help veterans in general with the situation and the challenges that they're going through? Um, basically awareness, you know, know that we don't, we don't do well being showered in a lot of sympathy and feeling like our issues are being enabled. At the same time, we don't want to feel overly criticized. We just want to be accepted. We just want to serve. And usually that's the big thing for veterans is we spend our entire military career serving and then we get out of the military and everything is more egocentric and we don't necessarily know how not to be part of a team. So just embracing it in awareness, contact your senators and complain about the treatment that they're getting at the VA. Yeah, share this episode with yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talk to, you know, if you know a veteran who's struggling, talk to them. Hey, have you heard about essential oils? Here, check out this podcast. <laughs> You're not alone. You are not alone. Yeah. There are so many, there are hundreds of thousands of people going through the same thing that you're going through. It's not an isolated event and people who are not a part of that, who want to be a part of it, there are so many local, national, international nonprofit organizations that you can help fundraise for, you can direct people to. Thank you, Nicole Graber. This has been an amazing episode. Thank you so much. I don't know what else to say. Just thank you. Thank you for having me. Wow. Thanks for listening, everyone. I know today's episode was pretty heavy, but coming out of it, I think that we all should just be even more diligent about taking care of ourselves and taking care of each other. Eat well, take care of yourself, use your oils, exercise, and just love each other. Don't forget today's episode was sponsored by Thrive Market forward slash Revolution Oils. If you want to go shop on Thrive Market and get an extra 20% off your first order, go to thrivemarket.com forward slash Revolution Oils. You can check out all of their amazing non-GMO brands. You can even shop based on your diet, whether that be vegan, paleo, gluten-free. They've got everything amazing on there. Hope you enjoyed the show. As always, keep on learning, keep on discovering, but most importantly, keep on treating yourself well. You are worth it. 